Mariners win 9-2 over the Detroit Tigers. They improved to 19-19 and on the season. Take the first of the nine-game road trip. Let's quickly talk about how it happened because actually there's a lot and I want to get through it. Jared Kelnick singles home J.P. Crawford in the first to make it one nothing. J.P. Crawford gets credited with an infield single. I think it was an error, but it does score Tom Murphy to make it 2 nothing. Ty France walks in a run with the bases loaded to make it 3 nothing. Julio Rodriguez singles to left and scores two to make it 5 nothing. Jared Kelnick grounds into a fielder's choice and gets... Uh, there's a fielder's choice and there was an error. I don't remember exactly what happened. It's 6 nothing. Uh, in the fifth inning, Marco Gonzalez does allow a two-run homer to Jake Rogers. That also scores Miguel Cabrera to make it 6-2. Teoscar Hernandez singles home Julio Rodriguez in the seventh to make it 7-2. And Julio Rodriguez basically puts a punctuation mark on the game with a two-run homer that scores Ty France to make it 9-2. Not many negatives we can talk about here. If we're going to talk about negatives, I didn't love seeing – I really like Matthew Boyd. I think – uh, I grew a little smitten with him with how excited he was to become a Seattle Mariner. I couldn't help it. Like it was, it was really endearing and he's been a pitcher. I've liked a lot and he was terrible tonight. Just terrible. Had no command. Awful, 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 awful. Um, kind of wanted the Mariners to bring him back as a lefty guy. You know, maybe it would make sense as a bullpen option if they needed him. No, not right now. <laughs> Right now, that decision looks like a pretty good one, and a good one for him because he's getting a chance to start. But, oh, boy, did he struggle tonight. Offensively, if there's a negative, I guess, A. Eugenio Suarez wasn't great. Does get a hit and a walk, though. I just want to see him driving the baseball again. It's been really weird watching him not drive the baseball. A guy with that much power. AJ Pollock struggled. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez struggled but did drive in a run and he actually hit the ball I think pretty well a couple of times as well uh there's very little negatives okay the positives uh first of all let's start with Marco I think Marco was solid tonight solid it's what I will take from him every single time now look I know Detroit was playing better Detroit's a bad baseball team man there are so many bad baseball teams right now it actually kind of makes me a little bit disgusted because there are some teams right now that just, <laughs> holy crap, they're bad. And Detroit has some young talent that I like. You know, Riley Green, I think, is going to be a really good player. I still think Spencer Torkelson has a chance to be a good one, although his case of not driving the baseball, really surprising because a guy who showed 20 power. By the way, I apologize for this is not the best lighted episode of it. <laughs> it I'm recording this at 1022. I just got off work and... Uh, I didn't feel like turning a bunch of lights on. You're in this for the audio anyway. Let's be honest. I mean, I'm not a bad little piece of eye candy, but you're here for the analysis. I really hope anyway. Also, it's hotter than heck today. What the heck? Come on, Washington. Get back into those 70s. Um, but yeah, I think Marco was really solid. The, the two-run homer was a big mistake. The bigger mistake really was walking Miguel Cabrera before it. Should have just been a solo blast. Only the two strikeouts, scattered some hits. I'll take that every time. I will take that every single time. Um, Justin Topot and Trevor Gott and Taylor Saucedo, all three did their jobs. Scoreless innings. Saucedo's been great, too. But you look at that, and again, with the Andres Munoz setback, or whatever the heck you want to call it, these arms are becoming much more important. And we're talking about Trevor Gott now with an ERA of 1.83, Justin Topa with an ERA of 1.13, and Taylor Sassetto has yet to give up an earned run. Now, look, ERA, flawed stat, but I think we can all agree those guys have all pitched well, right? I've been impressed with what I've seen anyway. So, yeah, the pitching did its job against a very poor Detroit lineup. Very poor. Playing better, but playing better against bad teams. And, again, there are just so many of those right now. It's embarrassing how many bad teams there are in baseball. And not like bad not like 74 and 88, like teams that should lose 100 baseball games. Somebody's not going to. It could be Detroit. Somebody's going to end up having a nice record because somebody has to win these games, right? It might be Detroit. All right, offensively. I think I like this lineup a lot. 
I think the one exception you make here is that you want Cal Rally in the lineup, right? But, you know, Tom Murphy had a decent game again, uh, reaches two twice and now has a 250, 283, 432 line. I will certainly take that from my backup catcher and a guy, you know, who can play against left handers. Um, I guess the one change I would make. So for those unfamiliar, here's how they lined up tonight. They went Crawford, France, Julio, Kalnick, Suarez, Teo, Tom Murphy, Pollock, Caballero. So I think the only change that I would make is I'd probably switch Kelnick and Rodriguez. I think I'd rather have Julio in that cleanup spot. But I can't complain about it. I can't. And I I like having Julio hit in the middle of the order. I get why he wanted to hit leadoff. And look, his speed at the top of the lineup. And we can talk about how on-base percentage matters more. Sure, it does. But I think Julio's talented enough to be a strong on-base guy. And the fact that he can run and J.P. Crawford who does a lot of things well, running and stealing bases ain't one of them. The ability to have your leadoff guy get on, especially in these new rules, and to steal second base is a big thing. So if he, if he, ideally, I guess, I don't know. I, I What I'm trying to say, and not very uh, poetically, is that if Julio wants to hit leadoff, and if that's what's going to make him happy, okay but I think they're better off having him hit third or fourth or second, second, third or fourth. So, but right now with him going through some stuff and who didn't go through some stuff tonight, folks, I was a little worried because he did pop up a ball that he should have crushed in the first inning. But after that, just an outstanding game, outstanding crushes that ball to right field. So funny that we're complaining about this guy. 219, 284, 11 isn't good. But there's been a lot of good from Julio this year. There's been a lot of bad, too. I get it. His expectations are super high. That's the reason why I gave him a C in our grades yesterday. But, man, you see when he's at his best, I mean, he has a chance to be one of the best players in baseball for a very long time. Really does. But I like this lineup. I think I, I think I really like it. I like France hitting ahead of Julio too. In part because, gosh, he's slow. <laughs> and look, if you're going to trade base runners in those type of situations, I'd much rather trade Julio being on base for France not being on base. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think I like this. Now, my question is, is when Rally's in the lineup, and he should be more often than not, do you have him hit fifth and move Suarez to sixth? It's a tough one. I'd really like Suarez to start driving the baseball here again, folks. Tough to complain too much when he scored nine runs. But I I don't know. I think a move down in the lineup might be a good thing for him. I know the power is going to come at some point, but this guy is now slugging 319. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That is easily the lowest in the lineup. It's 30 points behind J.P. Crawford. It is over 30 points behind Jose Caballero. It'd be ahead of Colton Wong. We're not counting Colton Wong right now. I do like this lineup, though. I like what they did. I have to give service a lot of credit. Because I think having Julio hit sixth was... I don't want to say stupid, but it was... It didn't make sense to me. It just didn't. Hulu hitting third and fourth, even while going through some stuff, makes sense to me. Great baseball players should not be hitting sixth based on a sample of 35 games. I'm sorry, or whatever it was. They shouldn't. But I really like this lineup. Be curious to see what it looks like tomorrow. Really curious. And a very nice start to the road trip. I think it's a big road trip. I really do. I think that taking two of three against Detroit at least is really important when you've got Boston and Atlanta coming up. Boston's not bad. And Atlanta's awesome. Tomorrow we have Bryce, not Bryson, Bryce Miller going up against Alex Fado. Fado was a guy I liked quite a bit coming out of Florida. 
pretty mediocre now. A 10-10 game. It's too early. I'll actually be recording a podcast for these guys, Rotowire, right when they're playing. So might actually be able to actually do a recap before I start work. That'd be nice. I don't want to have to wait until 10 p.m. to record, but, you know, the paycheck comes first. Good win. Did you guys like this lineup? I Again, I've said it a bunch of times. I think I really liked it. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. Uh, Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Again, I'm on that pretty much every weekend. Uh, yeah, and sports sometimes. Please check that out. Craig Calcaterra, awesome episode. Really, really appreciate you guys checking that out. I've had a lot of fun, and I've had a blast doing these. 124 more to go but I'm having an absolute hoot recording these. So yeah, give me your thoughts because I'm going to say it again. I think I like this lineup.